in a world filled with dungeons and savage monsters, chaos ruled the land. The Stampede, a giant event that shook everything, brought forth these fierce beasts, leading to a clash between humans and monsters. Five long years passed, and amidst the turmoil, there stood the largest dungeon of them all, Chikaho, looming over the city of Sapporo. Here, our hero, Kariboshi Haruki, entered the scene. At 27, he worked as an adventurer, a special job called upon by the Japanese government. Their mission, delve into dungeons, defeat monsters, and restore peace. Haruki was passionate about his job, but it seemed luck wasn't on his side. Despite Chikaho bustling with activity, his bag remained empty, devoid of loot. In this world, becoming an adventurer was a sought-after path, offering advantages in future job hunts. Haruki, being new to the scene, felt the need to work even harder due to the stiff competition. While others reveled in the adventurer's life, Haruki struggled to find success. His efforts were not met with the same enthusiasm as those who followed famous bloggers like Tatsun. Tatsun, a renowned blogger, enjoyed cheers and admiration from the crowd. Haruki, too, had his own blog, but the cheers and energy eluded him. Determined, he realized the need to carve his own path in this competitive world of dungeons and adventurers. The journey of Kariboshi Haruki was just beginning, and the challenges that lay ahead promised both danger and opportunity. After a long day of disappointment in Chikaho, Haruki decided to head home. Climbing into his car, he reflected on how his once ruined neighborhood had seen some improvement. However, his thoughts were interrupted when he reached home. To his surprise, the familiar entrance gate had transformed into a massive dungeon entrance. Confused and shocked, Haruki stared at the colossal gateway. The twists of fate took a turn for the worse when he lost his snowplow to the insatiable hunger of the dungeon. This loss hit hard because the snowplow was his lifeline for the upcoming winter. Facing the daunting prospect of shoveling through the snow with his bare hands, Haruki's eyes fell upon a nameplate. Picking it up, he discovered a mysterious button on it. Curiosity getting the better of him, he pressed the button. What followed was beyond his wildest imagination. The nameplate seemed to merge into Haruki's body, sending shivers down his spine. Panic set in as he tried to figure out how to expel this foreign intrusion. Desperation drove him to find a solution, but reality took a strange turn. Everything was not as straightforward as it appeared. The mysteries surrounding Haruki's new predicament were about to unfold, and the ordinary adventurer found himself entangled in an extraordinary situation. Not knowing what to do, Haruki decided to call the army for help. He thought they could figure out what was going on. When the soldiers arrived, Haruki tried to be helpful. But here's the funny part, they couldn't see him. It was like he was invisible. Poor Haruki had to shout to grab their attention. This wasn't new for him, though. He was used to being overlooked. Finally, after some yelling, the soldiers noticed Haruki. He handed them his skill board, hoping they could make sense of it. Haruki also expressed his wish to not be ignored all the time. The soldiers, scratching their heads, listened and promised to look into the dungeon. Haruki made it clear that he hadn't set foot inside the dungeon. The soldiers, in response, decided to put barricades around the area just to be safe. Surprisingly, they finished the job way faster than anyone expected. Curious about the situation, the soldiers asked Haruki if anything had been lost to the dungeon. He mentioned his snow plow, but all he got was a simple apology. The army couldn't do much about it. Before leaving, the soldiers advised Haruki to be careful, even with the barricades. They asked if he planned to train for anything dungeon-related. Awkwardly, they bid him goodbye and headed back to their base. And so, with a strange dungeon in the neighborhood and a skill board that brought more confusion than answers, Haruki found himself in an unexpected adventure, wondering what else was in store for him. With nothing much to do, Haruki decided it was time to level up his skills. He dashed to his room, donned his adventurer outfit, and passed through the barricades with his ID card, ready to explore the mysterious dungeon. Once inside, he felt a surge of energy. It was time to awaken his skill board. To his surprise, he could only do this inside the dungeon, not outside. Strange, but he rolled with it. Eager to boost his knowledge and powers, Haruki began his search for valuable items. Treasure chests and defeated monsters seemed to be the way to go. The dungeon had worked for our hero, and he was up for the challenge. Curious about his ranking, Haruki checked his stats, only to find himself at the H rank, labeled as a beginner. Determined to climb the ranks, he figured a rank or S rank must be the top tiers. To get there, he needed skill points. But when he looked at his stats, confusion struck him at zero points in any category, despite having some skills maxed out already. 
perplexed, Haruki stumbled upon a special section revealing something called growth rate. Apparently, defeating monsters was the key to gaining it. Eager to boost his skills, he toyed around with his skill board. In a moment of distraction, he accidentally put all his points into growth rate, leaving him in shock at the unintended consequences. And so, with a mix of confusion and newfound determination, Haruki embarked on a journey inside the dungeon, hoping that the mishap with his skill board wouldn't lead to more surprises and challenges ahead. Haruki found himself standing at the entrance of a dungeon, its entrance sparkling with the brilliance of precious crystals. Without much thought, he decided to embark on an adventure, but little did he know what awaited him inside. As Haruki stepped into the dungeon, he marveled at the shiny walls made of what seemed like clay. He pondered whether these walls could withstand the test of time, but before he could delve into deep thoughts, a sudden surprise awaited him. Out of the shadows emerged a giant insect monster, sending shivers down Haruki's spine. However, being the brave hero he was, Haruki quickly consulted his skill board and discovered that the monster was just a beginner-level threat. It was a centipede, slow and supposedly vulnerable at its head and antennae. Confident, Haruki prepared for the battle, but to his surprise, the centipede proved to be faster than expected. Initially struggling to keep up, Haruki soon adapted and matched the monster's speed. Determined to emerge victorious, Haruki charged at the centipede with all his might. The battle was tough, with Haruki unleashing his best moves to fend off the speedy centipede. Sweat dripped down his face as he dodged and countered, all while keeping an eye on the creature's weak points. Finally, after a fierce struggle, Haruki managed to stab the centipede in its vulnerable head, claiming victory. Exhausted, Haruki fell to the ground, having expended a significant amount of energy. Despite the fatigue, he felt a sense of accomplishment, knowing that he had gained valuable skills from this intense encounter. Little did he know that this was just the beginning of his adventurous journey, filled with more challenges and triumphs yet to come. After the intense battle with the centipede, Haruki, our valiant hero, approached the monster's carcass with determination. He wanted to harvest its valuable parts before other beasts could arrive on the scene. However, as he took a step forward, an unexpected wave of sickness overcame him, and he collapsed to the ground. Haruki realized that he had leveled up, but the side effects were hitting him hard. Nausea overwhelmed him, and he couldn't help but throw up. Staggering for a bit, he managed to gather his strength and get back on his feet. This was a new experience for him, and he speculated that it might be due to his rapid growth rate or the centipede's challenging level. Despite the discomfort, Haruki focused on the positive, he had gained a significant amount of XP. With renewed determination, he proceeded to harvest the centipede's parts. The insect's armor caught his eye, and he thought of using it as a shield. Skillfully collecting the armor, he realized it could be sold at a high price, but it was the centipede meat that intrigued him. Contemplating whether it was edible, Haruki decided to take a risk and nibbled a small bite. To his disappointment, the meat had no discernible taste. It was edible, but without flavor. Yet, considering the prevailing food shortage and the scarcity of vegetables, Haruki decided to keep the centipede meat as a last resort for times when starvation might loom. And so, our hero, now equipped with newfound skills and valuable loot, continued his journey through the dungeon, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead in this enchanting yet perilous world. Little did he know that more adventures and mysteries awaited him at every turn. After a rigorous day in the dungeon, Haruki decided to head back home and freshen up. He felt the need to unwind and relax before diving into any further adventures. Once he was refreshed, he remembered the adventurer's site known as Nauru. It was the go-to place for newbies like him, a hub of information about the latest news and developments in Japan, especially for those exploring the enchanting world he had stumbled upon. Legend had it that just visiting Nauru could boost the survival rate for newcomers. Eager to stay informed, Haruki delved into the site, absorbing all the different news and updates. Excited about the dungeon that had appeared right in front of his house, he quickly updated his own blog on the site, anticipating that he would go viral. However, reality hit him hard. Within an hour, there were only three views and no clicks on his blog. Disappointed and upset, Haruki thought his page might be broken. How could a new dungeon not be big news? He scratched his head, pondering over the mystery. Despite putting effort into his blogs, life seemed tough for him at the moment. In his quest for understanding, Haruki checked out another famous adventurer named Bacon. It turned out that higher-ranked adventurers like Bacon received calls from big companies and got paid through collaboration models. The perks included free weapons, a significant deal in their line of work. Bacon, one of the most highly ranked adventurers, had gained popularity due to his remarkable ability, making him the real deal in the adventurer community. 
As Haruki navigated through the world of adventurers, he realized that the path to fame and success wasn't always straightforward. Undeterred, our hero geared up for the next chapter of his journey, ready to face not only the challenges within dungeons but also the intricacies of the adventurer community. Little did he know that fame and fortune might be just around the corner, waiting to unfold in unexpected ways. In the vast world of adventurers, Haruki discovered two distinct figures, Bacon, the laid-back teacher who enjoyed his adventures, earning him the nickname Muscle Old Man, and Masa, the serious and strategic adventurer known as the hero and strategist. Masa held the record for the deepest dive into Japan's most challenging dungeon at Shinjuku Station. Eager to explore more perspectives, Haruki turned to a female adventurer named Shigure, the only woman in the top 10 rankings. Having trained since childhood, Shigure had never lost a fight, earning Haruki's admiration. However, her blog, like Masa's, remained empty. Curious about the whereabouts of the top-ranking adventurers, Haruki decided to check his own blog once more. To his dismay, there were still no views. Frustration and annoyance welled up within him. But amidst his disappointment, Haruki reminded himself that he had a dungeon right in his garage, along with magical tools waiting to be utilized. Determined to prove himself and seek validation, he made a bold decision. Entering the dungeon, Haruki faced an entire army of centipede monsters. The atmosphere crackled with tension as he unleashed his newfound skills, battling the creatures with determination. Each swing of his weapon and every strategic move echoed his determination to show the world what he was capable of. In the dimly lit dungeon, Haruki fought tirelessly, pushing himself to the limit. The once threatening centipede monsters now fell like dominoes before him. As he emerged victorious, a sense of accomplishment filled him. Though his blog may have gone unnoticed, the dungeon beneath his house became the proving ground for his skills. Little did Haruki know that this daring act would mark the beginning of a new chapter in his adventurer's journey. The challenges and mysteries ahead were sure to shape him into the hero he aspired to be, and perhaps, in the process, gain the recognition he sought in the vast and competitive world of adventurers. In the heart of his dungeon adventure, Haruki unleashed his newfound skills and determination, taking down not just a handful, but around a hundred centipede monsters. As he vanquished them one after another, a strange feeling crept in, it felt like he was bullying these creatures now. Nonetheless, our hero pressed on, having grown accustomed to the level up sickness that had once bothered him, having nearly completed mapping the first floor, Haruki felt a sense of achievement. However, his triumph was short-lived as a loud crack resonated beneath his foot. Suddenly, an entire army of centipede monsters emerged, charging at him with menacing speed. Though visibly concerned, Haruki did not hold back. He attacked with all his skills, noticing a significant improvement since his last encounter. Single hits were now enough to take down the monsters, and Haruki's body count reached an impressive 200. Despite his increasing prowess, Haruki felt a sense of stagnation. He realized that he had limited resources and needed a new weapon to continue growing stronger. There seemed to be no boss monster on this floor, and his skill points hadn't increased either. However, our resilient hero wasn't disheartened. With a determined spirit, he acknowledged the need for improvement and decided to venture down to the second floor. As Haruki descended into the unknown depths of the dungeon, he held onto the belief that someday, he would become even more formidable. The challenges and mysteries of the second floor awaited him, and with each step, he was one stride closer to unlocking new levels of strength and skill. Little did he know that the journey ahead would not only test his abilities but also reveal the true extent of his potential in the mystical world he had chosen to explore. As Haruki descended the stairs to the second floor of the dungeon, he couldn't help but notice that the terrain remained unchanged. It jogged his memory that dungeons typically maintained a consistent appearance until the tenth floor, where things tended to take a dramatic turn in difficulty. The lack of information about floors beyond the tenth intrigued him, adventurers, being freelancers, kept their tips and tricks close to their chests, unwilling to share with potential competitors. One undeniable trend, however, was the increasing size of dungeon floors with each level. As Haruki set foot on the second floor, he couldn't help but wonder about the new challenges and monsters that awaited him. To his surprise, the monsters on this floor weren't what he expected. Strange plants sprouted from the ground, quickly transforming into monster onions that attacked him without hesitation. Haruki, caught off guard, instinctively defended himself and defeated the vegetable-like foes. However, the unexpected encounter left him in tears, literally. The onions had a peculiar effect, making him cry uncontrollably. Haruki couldn't fathom how he managed to defeat onion monsters and found himself more focused on the business side of things. 
realizing the potential of these monster onions, Haruki saw an opportunity for profit. Even though they were hunted in excess, he believed he could create a monopoly by selling them. Thoughts of upgrading his equipment crossed his mind, and he decided to visit the weapon shop the next day for some much-needed enhancements. With a newfound entrepreneurial spirit and a tear-stained face, Haruki looked forward to turning his encounters in the dungeon into both strength and business acumen. Little did he know that the world beneath his house held not only challenges but also unexpected opportunities for growth and success. In a quiet corner of the adventurer's world, we meet a curvy woman lamenting her boredom. Running an empty weapon shop, she worries about not meeting her daily quota. The desolation of her shop mirrors her own sense of monotony. Meanwhile, Haruki, our adventurous hero, is enjoying a delicious meal of eggs at Mr. Katori's house. Grateful for the tasty treat, he remarks on how much better it is than the centipede meat. Mr. Kidori, Haruki's neighbor, has just received a generous gift of onion monsters from our hero. The atmosphere is warm as they share a moment, but it takes a poignant turn when Mr. Kidori reminisces about picking onions with his late wife. Emotion wells up as he expresses his longing and sadness for her absence. After finishing his meal, Haruki bids farewell to Mr. Kidori, ready to embark on another journey. But before his departure, there's business to attend to. Our hero heads to the guild store, where a reception girl sits at her desk. With a massive collection of centipede shells in tow, Haruki presents them before her. The girl can hardly believe her eyes as the shells seemingly materialize in front of her. In disbelief, she questions Haruki if they all belong to him. Undeterred, our hero confirms that they do and states his purpose, he's here to get an appraisal on all 200 of these shells. As the guild store reception girl grapples with the unexpected windfall of centipede shells, Haruki prepares to showcase the fruits of his dungeon conquests. The stage is set for potential sales and new opportunities, as our hero continues to carve his path in the enchanting yet unpredictable world of adventurers. The reception girl at the guild store, initially in disbelief at the sight of the centipede shells, quickly shifts to joy as she realizes the value they hold. She swiftly returns with an offer, and Haruki, more than pleased with the sum, accepts it without hesitation. Feeling richer than ever, he thanks the centipedes he massacred for their unexpected support. With his newfound wealth, Haruki fuels up his car and heads to the weapon shop he had spotted earlier. The assortment of armors and swords on display captivates him, and he finds himself smitten by the possibilities. As he contemplates his purchase, he initially considers a longsword but soon decides that he can be just as popular with a dagger. Set on the idea of daggers, Haruki explores the options and stumbles upon a werewolf dagger. However, the price tag shocks him, it costs a whopping million of the local currency. Haruki, ever modest, deems it quite middle class. Just as he's contemplating his budget, he's unexpectedly greeted by the same curvy girl from the weapon shop. Instantly charmed by her presence, Haruki is taken aback when she shows a keen interest in him. She decides to open the dagger case for him, catching him completely by surprise. It's the first time someone has noticed Haruki all on their own, and to make it even more interesting, it's a pretty girl. Overwhelmed by the unexpected attention, our hero covers his eyes as she takes out a key from her treasure chest and uses it to unlock the dagger case. Strangely, Haruki finds himself more nervous in the presence of a girl than he does when facing a fearsome dungeon monster. The world of adventurers, it seems, holds surprises beyond the challenges of dungeons and monsters. Elated by the unexpected attention and charm of the cute girl, Haruki finds himself completely forgetting about the werewolf dagger. Noticing his distraction, the girl encourages him to touch it. Haruki eagerly grabs the dagger but is stunned when he can't lift it. The cute girl calmly explains that the dagger chooses its owner as it's made from dungeon materials. She redirects him from the middle-class weapons to the entry-class models which, though more expensive, provide exceptional performance. Haruki's attention is drawn to the Silver Wolf Dagger, and this time, he lifts it with comfort, albeit feeling its weight. Pleased by his successful interaction with the weapon, Haruki curiously asks the cute girl about her experience selling items that can't be handled. She candidly reveals that many customers come back asking for refunds because they often buy weapons based on looks and pricing. Haruki attempts to express sympathy, but the cute girl surprises him by confessing that she can be mean when needed. She recounts an instance of showing this dark side to an annoying customer, causing Haruki to panic. However, she assures him that, at most, his face might change. Observing the armor Haruki wears, the cute girl questions if he's a mid-level adventurer. Despite being a novice, Haruki admits to the damage on his armor, prompting the girl to suggest that he might be more experienced than he claims. 
the unexpected encounter with the cute girl not only introduces Haruki to the intricate world of weapons but also hints at the layers of surprises awaiting him in his journey as an adventurer. Despite Haruki's attempts to act modest about his skills, the cute girl sees through his facade, deeming him unreasonable. She gets close to him, almost poking at his intrusive thoughts, expressing concern for his safety and not wanting him to lose his life. To add a playful twist, she strikes poses that would melt any man's heart and questions if she's being weird. Haruki, caught in the web of her charm, is not about to admit she's weird. Taking advantage of his gullibility, she suggests he buys more armor for his protection. As expected, our hero succumbs to her charm without putting up much of a fight. In the end, he ends up purchasing not only the silver wolf dagger but also a centipede protection armor and a weird mask that makes little sense. Having made the sale, Haruki leaves the store, leaving the cute girl, now identified as Akane, a very satisfied seller. Overjoyed to have met her quota for the day, she revels in the successful sale of the weird mask, which, unbeknownst to Haruki, turns out to be a cursed item. No one was willing to buy it due to the cursed miasma energy it emitted, and to make matters worse, the mask wasn't even a magical tool. We learn that Akane is thankful to have encountered someone like Haruki, who, in her words, was way too easy for her to scam. As Haruki unknowingly walks away with his new purchases, the enchanting world of adventurers proves to be not just about dungeons and monsters but also about the unexpected twists and turns and interactions with its colorful characters. Akane, the cunning saleswoman, contemplates bragging about her successful sale to other stores. Meanwhile, we learn that the silver wolf dagger Haruki purchased can only be handled by someone from the middle levels. This restriction arises from the fact that silver wolves, the source of the dagger's material, typically appear between floors 6 and 8 in dungeons. Their fangs are then used to craft these exclusive weapons. Curious about Haruki's claim of being a beginner when his skills suggest otherwise, Akane sets aside these thoughts. Her focus now shifts to potentially boasting about her successful transaction with other stores. As our hero leaves the weapon shop, he curses himself for buying what he perceives as useless items just because a cute girl engaged him in conversation. Unaware of the uniqueness of his silver wolf dagger, Haruki reflects on the impulsive nature of his purchase. Moving to the city of Chikao, where people are at level 1 of the underground, Haruki arrives but finds the excitement a bit excessive. Having already experienced the challenges of real dungeons, he fails to see the big fuss around Chikao. Despite this, he acknowledges how far he has come from fighting monsters on the first and second floors. Today is different, as he plans to conquer the deepest levels of Chikao. Reaching a new floor, Haruki instantly gains skill points as displayed on his skill board. With no time to waste, he gets to work, wielding his new silver wolf dagger to efficiently dispatch monsters. The journey through the mysterious depths of Chikaho unfolds, as Haruki faces new challenges and discovers the true extent of his abilities in the captivating world of adventurers. Haruki finds the new floor surprisingly easy to navigate, wondering if it's the impact of the silver wolf dagger as Akane had suggested. Regardless, he is pleased with the progress and decides to descend further into the dungeon, anticipating fewer people on the lower floors. As he reaches the new floor, the ease of his journey takes an abrupt turn. Haruki is suddenly attacked by an unusual beast. Fortunately, his armor protects him from significant damage, but he starts coughing due to the unexpected assault. To his shock, he finds himself facing a killer rabbit. Killer rabbits, known for their developed feet, move and strike with remarkable speed. The murderous intent emanating from this rabbit exceeds that of the centipedes, making it a formidable opponent. Despite the unexpected challenge, Haruki decides to confront the killer rabbit. An intense battle ensues as the rabbit lunges at Haruki. Although he manages to push it back, the monster cushions itself against the impact and charges at him once again. Quick on his feet, Haruki draws his silver wolf dagger and, with a single strike, brings down the relentless rabbit. With the killer rabbit defeated, Haruki breathes a sigh of relief. However, his moment of peace is short-lived as a group of adventurers arrives at the scene. The group of adventurers is taken aback by the sight of the dead killer rabbit, realizing that someone else arrived before them to dispatch it so swiftly. Haruki, still shaking from the impact of the battle, overhears their conversation about the urgency to eliminate monsters quickly. Intrigued and suspicious, he listens as they mention the upcoming monster parade. Feeling uneasy about the situation, Haruki is not keen on collecting the bounty for the killer rabbit. The talk of a decoy further adds to his suspicion. The adventurers, opting for a strategic retreat, run away in the hope of better luck. However, Haruki is not one to back down. Instead, 
he decides to take matters into his own hands, running in the opposite direction, determined to uncover the truth and get what he wants in this mysterious and unpredictable underground world. In another part of the dungeon, a cute girl named Karen is among a group of adventurers. When someone points to her and asks if she is Karen, she confirms, sparking excitement among the others. Karen is a popular blogger on Nauru, and her presence creates a buzz. Some of the men, initially skeptical due to her popularity, had thought she might be a troll or a shady person. Clarifying that she is indeed who she claims to be, Karen places herself under the care of the adventurers who had just encountered Haruki. The team introduces themselves as Lars, Shikama, and Haria. Curiosity kicks in, and the men inquire about Karen's age. She reveals she's 18, prompting Lars to express doubts about her reliability, albeit in a playful manner. Panic briefly sets in for Karen, but the mood lightens as Lars and Haria start teasing Shikama for being a new bee. Despite the initial banter, Shikama reassures Karen that everything will be fine as long as she follows them and doesn't create too much trouble. With the team dynamics set, they move forward. The men typically operate below the ninth floor, making the task ahead seem relatively easy. As Karen joins this group of adventurers, a new chapter unfolds in the underground world, revealing the diverse characters and dynamics that shape the journey for those exploring its depths. After a long and challenging journey, Karen, feeling exhausted, decides to drop to the ground to catch her breath. The men in the group assume she might not be up for the task, unaware that Karen has actually defeated numerous monsters and is feeling sick from the level up side effects. Not wanting to reveal her condition, she pretends to be fine and insists that she's good to continue. Shikama admires Karen's bravery, noting that many girl adventurers tend to stay on the first and second floors. Grateful for the praise, Karen is about to respond when the men notice something nearby and prepare for an encounter. The sounds grow louder, revealing the team is about to face a mon pair, a monster parade. Realizing the danger, Shikama and the others instruct Karen to run while they still can. A mon pair, as per the information available on Nauru, is extremely perilous, a massive collection of beasts attacking the target simultaneously. Advised to retreat whenever encountering such a situation, the team, including Lars, Shikama, and Haria, decides to run for their lives. Karen, understanding the severity of the situation, follows suit, determined to escape the imminent threat and ensure her survival in the perilous underground world. Karen, unable to keep up with the pace of the men, falls behind during their attempt to escape the approaching mon pair. In a debate among the men on what to do, considering their collective decision, they conclude that they will fight the monsters and protect Karen. Touched by their decision, Karen is grateful to be with such a courageous group. Thinking she'll hide behind the men to avoid getting in their way, Karen is shocked when they deliberately knock her down. Shikama reveals that Karen is going to be used as a decoy, allowing the team to escape safely. This explains the earlier encounter when the men bumped into a rookie. Left helpless and alone, Karen faces imminent danger as the killer rabbits close in on her. Screaming for help, she desperately wishes for a different outcome. Just in the nick of time, Haruki rushes towards the scene, following the sound of the approaching rabbit monsters. As he arrives, he witnesses Karen in a perilous situation. Haruki, aware that he doesn't have much HP left, contemplates the daunting task of defeating the oncoming monster army. Faced with limited options, he decides to bring out the cursed mask, wearing it on his face as he implores for strength. The unfolding events set the stage for a dramatic and potentially perilous turn in Haruki's journey, as he confronts the challenges of the underground world to rescue Karen from the impending threat. As the killer rabbits close in on Karen, she braces herself for the impending attack. However, to her surprise, a sudden surge of massive energy repels the monsters and takes down many of them. Looking up, Karen sees Haruki wearing the cursed mask, effortlessly dispatching the killer rabbits one after another. The mask has transformed him, making the task seem remarkably easy despite having only one point left. Haruki, fueled by the power of the mask, thoroughly enjoys the rampage and doesn't stop until he defeats all the killer rabbits in front of him. Although exhausted, he emerges victorious from the intense battle, grateful for having survived the monster parade. Turning his attention to Karen, who is a bit scared by his appearance due to the mask, Haruki offers to take it off to reassure her. However, she surprises him by holding his hand and expressing gratitude for saving her life. Touched by her feelings, Haruki is glad to have helped her. Forgetting to remove the mask, he then suggests that Karen assist him in collecting the bounties for all the dead rabbits. Despite finding the mask still creepy, Karen agrees, and together they manage to collect a substantial number of rabbit bodies. 
the dramatic turn of events not only showcases Haruki's newfound strength but also solidifies the bond between him and Karen, marking a significant chapter in their shared adventure in the mysterious underground world. Karen, still in awe of Haruki's prowess, asks if he's a Sapporo ranker. To her surprise, Haruki reveals that he has only just started his journey. This revelation astonishes Karen, considering the daring feat he just accomplished by charging into a monster parade and emerging victorious. Haruki, too, is shocked by his own actions, admitting that he went into a daze during the intense battle. He attributes his success to the mysterious skill board but decides not to share this with Karen, as it might not make sense to her. Curious about the men Haruki encountered on his way to the monster parade, he asks Karen if she knows them. Her response reveals a disheartening truth, those men had recruited her to join their team but abandoned her during the monster parade, using her as a decoy to ensure their own escape. This revelation angers Haruki, especially recalling the conversation about the decoy on their way out. As an adventurer, Haruki understands the challenging decisions one might have to make, but he believes abandoning a comrade is only justifiable when they are strong enough to fight on their own. Lars and the others' betrayal of their duty to protect their fellow adventurers and comrades deeply disturbs Haruki. He realizes that what they did to Karen is unforgivable, and he firmly etches this betrayal into his mind, vowing to remember the importance of loyalty and trust in the perilous world beneath his house. On a lighter note, we shift to Akane, who is ecstatic about the significant sale she made to Haruki. She visits another branch manager to boast about her success, but her enthusiasm ends up annoying the manager, who demands some respect. Unfazed, Akane, not one to yield to authority based on experience alone, ends up insulting the woman by referring to her as an elder who is no match for a young and pretty girl like herself. This exchange escalates, and it seems like the situation is about to turn into a catfight. However, before things get too serious, they notice a customer entering the store. To their surprise, it's Haruki, with his bounty in tow. Karen accompanies him, and, for some reason, Haruki still hasn't taken off his mask. Panicking upon seeing him, Akane quickly hides under the table to avoid any potential drama. As the reception lady greets Haruki and Karen, she notices the killer rabbit horns they've brought with them. They estimate there should be around 100 of them, leaving both Akane and the other woman in shock at the unexpected turn of events. The revelation of the bounty adds a new layer of excitement and suspense to the scene, setting the stage for a potentially eventful encounter in the store. Akane starts to grow suspicious of Haruki, realizing that she had underestimated his strength. Taking down 100 killer rabbits is no small feat, and she begins to wonder about his true capabilities. As Akane tries to unravel the mystery surrounding Haruki, the other lady rewards him generously for the bounty and proposes dividing the reward so that Karen gets her share. Haruki agrees, not minding the extra service points he'll earn, but Karen feels he's doing too much for her. Haruki justifies Karen's share, noting her help in carrying the horns, but Karen insists she didn't fight the monsters and wants to be paid fairly. Haruki instructs the reception girl to calculate Karen's bounty based on her efforts. However, this revelation leaves Akane shocked as she realizes that Haruki managed to take down all 100 killer rabbits by himself. Despite the shock, Akane quickly recovers and takes action. She pulls the reception lady aside, expressing that such a small payment to Karen wouldn't be appropriate. While Haruki tries to recall where he has seen Akane before, the reception girls engage in a heated argument over the calculation. Akane is aware that the guild can make small payments, but the other girl insists that extra work would be required to address the situation. The unfolding events hint at potential complications and conflicts within the guild, adding a layer of intrigue to the story. Akane, not one to hold back, decided it was time to take control of the situation. With a sly smile, she popped up and revealed herself to Haruki and Karen, leaving the reception girl in dismay. Akane, with her impressive skills, swiftly calculated and loaded the payments separately for both our heroes. Haruki, although recognizing Akane as the girl who had scammed him before, didn't make a big deal out of it. Instead, he and Karen were amazed by Akane's efficiency. They left the store, the task completed without any hassles. Meanwhile, the reception girl wasn't pleased with Akane acting on her own. A scolding ensued, but Akane didn't back down. She boldly told the reception girl that Haruki was a valuable customer who deserved top-notch treatment. Despite the scolding, Akane believed some rules could be bent, especially if it meant keeping the customers happy and bringing in money. The reception girl, not impressed, insisted on reporting Akane to her superiors. Unfazed, Akane confidently declared that the reception girl would soon be thanking her for what she did. The story continued, 
leaving behind a mix of tension and confidence in the air, as our characters ventured into the city's adventures. As the day wound down, Haruki decided it was time to head back home. He hopped into his car, ready to leave behind the chaotic events at the store. However, Karen, grateful for Haruki's help, insisted on repaying him. Haruki, being the hero with a kind heart, simply wanted to save her and said she didn't need to repay him, but Karen was determined to express her gratitude. She declared she was ready to do anything for Haruki, and this sparked some unexpected thoughts in our hero's mind. Haruki tried to keep things innocent, reminding himself that Karen was just an innocent girl. Yet, the temptation of the dark side lurked as the idea of being with an 18-year-old girl crossed his mind. In this peculiar moment, Haruki was still wearing the strange mask. A humorous scene unfolded as he reassured Karen that everything was fine, and they drove back home. Once home, Haruki flopped onto his bed, realizing the exhaustion of the day. It was then he noticed he was still wearing the mask, leading him to a moment of self-reflection. Haruki remembered the startled receptionist earlier and admitted to feeling oddly happy and free with the mask on. The mask seemed to have brought attention from attractive girls like Akane and Kirin, a rarity for him. Feeling like he was living in a dream, Haruki concluded that the mask must be a divine gift. With that revelation, he decided to take it easy and head to one of the popular taverns in the kingdom, ready for more adventures in the strange and amusing world he found himself in. In the midst of the lively tavern, Haruki found himself in a moment he had only read about on Nauru. He savored the reality of being here, drink in hand, in a place that once existed only in his imagination. The expensive atmosphere didn't concern him, as this day held a special significance. As the drinks continued to flow, the talk around the tavern shifted to a peculiar man seen earlier wearing a funny mask. Haruki, recognizing himself as the subject, decided to keep a low profile, not wanting to attract unnecessary attention. The men at the tavern, unaware of Haruki's identity, poked fun at the mysterious masked man, mocking his outfit. Surprisingly, Haruki took joy in being the talk of the town, with tears of happiness welling up in his eyes. To celebrate, he ordered another drink. However, the unsuspecting patrons were startled as Haruki ordered, realizing someone had been quietly sitting among them. Undeterred, Haruki enjoyed his drink, relishing the attention he unwittingly gained. Eventually, he decided to head back to the hotel to update his blog, eager to share the details of his encounter with the killer rabbits. He anticipated decent views, considering the thrilling content of his post. As he updated his blog, Haruki recalled Karen mentioning her own interest in writing blogs. The thought lingered in his mind, adding another layer of curiosity to the day's unexpected adventures. Little did he know, this peculiar day was turning into a tale worth sharing, both in the real world and the digital realm of blogs and narratives. The next day, Haruki, still reveling in the newfound attention, eagerly opened his laptop to check for updates. He discovered a heartwarming surprise, he had been bookmarked for the first time. Excitement surged through him, and he couldn't help but happily announce his budding fame. Initially contemplating a return home to level up in the garage dungeon, Haruki's plans took an unexpected turn as he touched the cursed mask. Memories of Karen's ordeal rushed back, prompting him to consider meeting her. The desire to express gratitude for her blog post lingered in his mind. However, there was a slight hitch, he never learned Karen's name. Undeterred, Haruki roamed the streets, hoping to stumble upon the girl who had shared her heartfelt sentiments. To his surprise, Karen found him first, calling out to him with genuine joy. Haruki, bewildered by this unexpected encounter, wondered how Karen managed to spot him, especially given his usually unnoticed presence. Moreover, she called out his name, a first-time experience for our hero. Haruki realized that the cursed mask he wore made him quite conspicuous in the crowd. Astonished by his luck in acquiring the mask for a mere 500 yen from Akane, he gleefully called her a store goddess and danced with joy. Karen, slightly confused by his sudden burst of happiness, joined in the conversation. Their chat was abruptly interrupted as Karen spotted the men who had abandoned her earlier. Haruki, recognizing them from his brief encounter in the dungeon, felt a surge of anger. He believed these men had come to check on Karen, fearing she might expose the truth about their actions. Haruki, disgusted by their lack of humanity, asked Karen to wait behind him. As the confrontation unfolded, all three men charged at Haruki with their weapons. The situation became tricky, with a shield, an arrow, and a sword to contend with. The fact that these men were openly attacking an innocent girl fueled Haruki's anger. He didn't even consider them qualified as people. In the heat of the moment, Haruki faced a difficult spot. Shikama, one of the men, struck first, positioning himself right next to Haruki. 
this left our hero exposed and vulnerable to an impending attack. The urgency of the situation demanded swift action, and Haruki needed to navigate the dangerous dance with these menacing foes to protect himself and Karen from harm. As the tension escalated, a sudden hero emerged on the scene, the legendary Masatsugu, also known as Masa. A cheer erupted from the crowd, particularly the girls, as Masa intervened to stop the conflict. Curious about the commotion, he questioned why there was a fight in the midst of the crowd. Shikama, lacking any sense of honor, attempted to shift the blame onto Aruki and Karen. He claimed they had pushed him and his men into a monster parade. The crowd's attention shifted, and judgmental whispers filled the air, fueled by these false accusations. Haruki, uneasy with the turn of events, found himself at a disadvantage. However, Masa wasn't one to believe lies without reason. He asked Haruki to explain the situation. Haruki recounted the ordeal that Lars and his men had put poor Karen through. Masa, upon hearing the facts, turned to the evildoers with visible anger, prompting them to feign innocence. Attempting to manipulate the situation, the evil men questioned Masa's trust in Haruki's words over theirs. Unfazed, Masa declared that the evildoers had lost the moment they drew their weapons on Haruki and Karen. The crowd's judgment began to shift in favor of our heroes. At that very moment, the scene attracted the attention of the police. Seeing Masa, they approached with admiration, expressing their fandom for his heroic deeds. With the official forces now present, Haruki felt a sense of security as Masa conversed with the police. The authorities wasted no time in taking Lars and his men away to the station without questioning them. Justice had prevailed, and Haruki looked at Masa with newfound respect. Turning his attention to Haruki, Masa inquired about his name, leaving our hero momentarily shocked. Masa then revealed his hero name, Air, praising Haruki's powers. This puzzled Haruki initially, wondering if Masa was trying to provoke him. However, Masa clarified that he hadn't sensed Haruki's presence until now, acknowledging the unique ability to keep one's presence hidden. Haruki tried to reassure Masa that he wasn't intentionally hiding, but Masa focused on his eyes. Cautioning Haruki against coming to town, Masa hinted at some shady activities. Despite the warning, he assured Haruki that he would take care of the evil men. Haruki, feeling a bit shy, was surprised when Masa stated that he was merely doing what was expected from an adventurer. Moreover, he wanted to ensure that Lars and his men faced consequences for their actions, as they didn't deserve to share the same profession as Masa. As the encounter unfolded, Haruki found himself caught between a mix of admiration and caution, uncertain about the mysterious events surrounding the town and the true nature of his encounter with the legendary adventurer, Masa. The intensity of Masa's anger was palpable in his eyes, surprising Haruki with the depth of emotion this situation stirred within the legendary adventurer. Masa declared his intention to stay for a while, expressing his disgust with Lars and his men and the desire to oversee their treatment. Haruki was pleased to hear this and decided to step away from the scene, giving him a chance to reflect on the encounter. As Haruki examined his skill board, hoping to use Masa's information as a reference, he was left speechless. The A-rank fighter's skills were on a level far beyond what Haruki could currently access. The revelation of a divine protection feature, indicating spirit slaves serving Masa, left our hero overwhelmed. Before he could fully process this information, the skill board vanished, leaving Haruki in a state of astonishment. Eager to check on Masa and perhaps inquire about the Holy Sword's stats, Haruki headed out but noticed that the legendary adventurer had already left, explaining his absence on the skill board. Haruki was left with the anticipation of their next meeting. Just as he navigated his thoughts, Karen called out to him, expressing her desire to visit the dungeon. Haruki, confused by the request, found the situation even more intriguing when Karen clarified that she was referring to the dungeon at his place. The unexpected turn of events left Haruki both perplexed and curious about the unfolding developments in this mysterious world. Curious about how Karen had uncovered his secret, Haruki learned that she had done some research on him, particularly after he mentioned his hero name, Air. Having read Haruki's blog about the dungeon under his hero name, Karen was well informed about him. Despite Haruki's attempts to dissuade her by claiming there was nothing to do at his place, Karen was undeterred. She was determined to use the dungeon, and Haruki's protests fell on deaf ears. Trying one last time, Haruki suggested that Karen's parents might worry if she came home late since he lived far away. Surprisingly, Karen reassured him that it was okay, prompting Haruki to wonder if she even had a family. Not wanting to complicate things further, he decided to bring her along. In the car, Haruki, realizing Karen might understand the pain of losing something, embarked on a new adventure with her. They drove through the countryside, and Karen marveled at the picturesque views. 
Finally arriving at Haruki's place, they headed straight to the dungeon, which Karen found amazing. She expressed her admiration for the convenience of having a dungeon right outside one's house, unaware of the harsh truth that awaited her. When Karen inquired about a trade store, Haruki bluntly told her that it didn't exist in their town because it was too far away from civilization. Her disappointment grew even more apparent when she asked about a weapons store, and Haruki humorously asked her not to give him those disappointed eyes. He explained that their town had lost physical stores due to the rising demand for online shopping, deciding they shouldn't dwell on such matters. Instead, he invited Karen for a sneak peek inside the dungeon. As they entered, Haruki questioned Karen about her knowledge of the monsters, and she mentioned being aware of the centipedes. Haruki cautioned her about their ability to destroy armor but suddenly noticed that her outfit wasn't suitable for this kind of dungeon. It seemed like she had chosen her attire without much thought. Deciding to save these questions for later, Haruki's attention shifted when a centipede monster appeared. Karen, visibly scared, received reassurance from Haruki, who encouraged her to try defeating one of the insects as they were relatively easy. Demonstrating, he calmly stomped on one of the monsters, shocking Karen with his composed demeanor as he squashed the creature's head. The unexpected encounter with the dungeon's inhabitants added an intriguing twist to their adventure, leaving Karen both amazed and uncertain about what lay ahead. Karen, finding the situation a bit much, cutely asked Haruki to stop. Unfazed, Haruki, with a mischievous smile, teased her about closing her eyes whenever a monster appeared. Determined to teach her a lesson, he reminded her that closing her eyes wouldn't cut it in the dangerous world of dungeons. Acknowledging that the centipedes weren't lethal, Haruki warned Karen about more formidable monsters and stressed the importance of being careful. He motivated her by emphasizing that she could only become a true adventurer by accepting the harsh reality of their surroundings. Inspired, Karen picked up her stick and finished off the centipede, gaining a level and experiencing the accompanying sickness. As Haruki collected the armor, Karen, curious about his experience, asked how long he had been doing this. Surprisingly, Haruki revealed that he had only started this year, leaving Karen amazed since she too had started recently. Considering that Haruki hadn't undergone any martial arts training, Karen found his progress particularly impressive. Feeling down about her perceived weakness, she was lifted up by Haruki, who assured her that she could reach his level with determination and by continuously defeating monsters. The camaraderie between them began to grow, marking the start of a unique bond forged in the challenging world of dungeons. Embracing Haruki as her teacher, Karen enthusiastically promised to vanquish every single centipede in the dungeon. Haruki, amused by her enthusiasm, asked her not to go to such extremes. Undeterred, the duo began their journey, swiftly taking down multiple centipedes. However, it was apparent that Haruki found it easy, while Karen, despite putting up an impressive show, grew tired from the effort. Realizing the disparity in their abilities, Haruki acknowledged the growth factor boosts that set him apart. When Karen requested a break, Haruki, understanding her lack of advantage, allowed it. Karen, exhausted, instantly passed out. Haruki, impressed by her determination and lack of complaints about the tough training, recognized her potential as a gutsy individual willing to put in the hard work to become a top adventurer. Deciding to help her out, Haruki examined Karen's stats while she dreamed about centipedes. In this moment, he made an interesting discovery about his new partner, setting the stage for more surprises and revelations in their evolving partnership within the challenging world of dungeons. To Haruki's surprise, he discovered that Karen possessed magic skills, something he had not yet encountered in this world. Recognizing the significant advantage that magic powers could provide to an adventurer, Haruki was intrigued and eager to witness Karen's abilities firsthand. However, he also sensed that Karen had been hiding her magical skills for a reason, just like he concealed his own skill board. Deciding to address the matter, Haruki planned to have a chat with Karen once she woke up. When he asked her about her ability to use magic, Karen became alert, ready to defend herself. Realizing the gravity of the topic, Haruki tried to defuse the situation by explaining that he made an assumption based on her attire. Karen clarified that magic girls didn't typically wear the type of clothes she had on. Haruki dismissed it as a misunderstanding, asserting that if there were magic weapons in this world, magic powers should exist too. Karen somewhat agreed, adding that a magic user would not reveal their skills unless they were at an advanced level. This confirmation heightened Haruki's suspicion that Karen did indeed possess magical abilities but chose not to reveal them to others. The mystery surrounding their skills deepened, adding another layer of intrigue to their budding partnership in the world of dungeons and magical powers. Curiously examining Karen's stats, Haruki noticed a section labeled Luck. 
Unsure if it was good or bad luck, he speculated that it might be related to her magical powers. His awkward behavior while checking her stats raised suspicion, but suddenly the ground began to shake. Initially mistaking it for an earthquake, the reality was more menacing. The ground started to crack open, and both Haruki and Karen, fearing a monster parade, decided to escape. To their surprise, they had encountered a giant centipede, a creature usually found on the eighth floor, not the first floor where they currently were. These giant centipedes were deadly, highly poisonous, and incredibly fast. The monster wasted no time showcasing its skills, swiftly moving between Haruki and Karen. Confused by its unexpected appearance, Haruki warned Karen to be careful as it seemed the creature was targeting her. Despite Haruki's attempts to fight, landing several direct hits, nothing seemed to affect the giant centipede. The encounter with this formidable foe marked a sudden and dangerous turn in their dungeon adventure. The encounter with the giant centipede brought bad news for Haruki, as these monsters were known to be tougher than floor bosses and exceptionally rare. The battle proved challenging, with Haruki's dagger dealing minimal damage, leaving him with limited options. The giant centipede charged at him, creating a precarious situation. However, Haruki's attention was drawn to Karen, who was doing something with her cane. In a surprising turn of events, Karen's action seemed to guide the giant centipede's mouth directly into Haruki's dagger, ultimately causing the monstrous creature to drop dead. Puzzled by this unexpected assistance, the immediate priority for both Haruki and Karen was to exit the dungeon safely. Thrilled to be out of the danger zone, another surprise awaited them outside. A weapons store appeared in town suddenly, a peculiar occurrence considering it wasn't there when they entered the dungeon. Despite the strangeness of the situation, Haruki and Karen decided to enter the store in the hope of finding something useful. To their dismay, the store was not only empty but also held an unexpected visitor, Akane. Akane appeared different from before, both in appearance and tone. Her presence raised numerous questions for Haruki and Karen. How did Akane end up in Haruki's town right after he bought items from her? What kind of magic was Karen hiding, and how did it connect to the mysterious events unfolding around them? The plot thickened as the adventurers found themselves entangled in a web of magic and intrigue. Like, share, and subscribe to find out in the next video. Hit the bell icon to get notified when I upload part 2. See you soon.